A recent report from the Partnership for Public Service found that federal employees under the age of 30 are quitting at a higher rate than their older counterparts. Oma Sadiq is a reporter for Insider. She recently wrote an article on the findings. Oma, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. So what is the rate of young people quitting and, and how does that compare to the private sector? Right, so the rate of young people quitting is 8.5%. And while that necessarily isn't a large number by itself compared to the private sector, that represents around 11,000 people, it is a big number when you compare it to their older counterparts in the federal workforce. So those aged 30 to 59 who are hovering around this at an average rate of 4%. So it's double that rate. And it's also significant because it's higher than the overall government-wide attrition rate, so the rate at which people are leaving, which is around an average of 6%. Um, and so while this is not necessarily a cause for alarm, we're not seeing the federal government have uh, a level of crisis or experiencing this so-called great resignation that has really you know, affected um, so many industries over these past two years during the pandemic. It is important because why are these people under the age of 30 uh, leaving at higher rates than their older counterparts? That, that's what I was going to ask you. What's the reason? Why are they leaving? Right. So we've seen many reasons as to why young people have been leaving their jobs these past couple of years. They're looking for better opportunities. They want higher pay. They want uh, the opportunity to have remote work. They want a better work-life balance. They want a, a pathway to promotion. And so um, for, the, for the federal government particularly, uh, one reason could be low pay. There was another report uh, published by the, the Partnership for Public Service, which surveyed job satisfaction. And while young people, particularly this cohort under the age of 30, are generally satisfied at their job, they reported uh, high levels of, of satisfaction at their job, one of their top concerns was low pay. So that could be driving a lot of this turnover. Uh, another reason, particularly because they're at this early stage of their career, they could be just going back to school. You know, they could be going back to get another degree and they may eventually return to the federal workforce. But overall, it is hard to retain young talent. It is hard to bring young people into to work for the federal government in the first place. So it definitely sends a signal to these federal government agency leaders, these managers, bosses, you know, to start paying attention to this to this young group. So, Oma, there, there was discussion in the report about the impact of the pandemic and young people that were new hires during that time. Mm -hmm. What did they find? So it's difficult for young people to be, you know, most of them maybe at, um, earlier in their career, age 22, fresh out of college, who had already gone through the remote uh, remote college experience now shifting to maybe a remote uh, federal government experience. And it's costly. The, 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 the process of onboarding, the process of uh, bringing new hires on, the training that it takes, all of this costs a lot of money and a lot of time. So it, so it's you know kind of imperative to maybe retain these talent for a little while so that they may not have to re -go, go through this process all over again with another group of young people. It's, it was also very difficult to find mentors uh, when everybody's remote and, and to really connect with people. That's gotta mm -hmm. be difficult for a young person. Right, I mean, just sitting behind the screen all day is not necessarily gonna form the same connection you would as having someone there with you in person uh, to guide you and to show you the ropes. Uma, if, if, as you say, you know, young people were dissatisfied with the pay, isn't, isn't there a proposal to increase their pay? I mean, it seems like an obvious solution. Right. I mean, it is, it is one solution. Uh, another solution could just be to really just analyze what's going on with these young people and see if there's other opportunities to help them out. Maybe they want to come into the office more. Maybe they want to have a permanent remote work schedule. Maybe they want to have more travel opportunities through their job. Um, maybe they want to have a direct pathway to uh, get a raise, to get that promotion, to move up in their career. Um, so there are plenty of uh, things that uh, bosses can be looking at. The most important message here is that they should be paying attention to this young cohort. Because another thing I want to mention is that the only uh, age group that had a higher rate of leaving were people over the age of 59. And so that's largely attributed to retirement. So a lot of people retire each year. That's inevitable. 
that's natural. And that's typically the largest group of people that are leaving the federal workforce each year. So young people, having a solid group of young people in the federal workforce can help fill that gap that comes at the end of each year when people are retiring. So to have a strong workforce will alleviate the, the federal government's uh, uh, job in that way. And finally, Oma, did the findings signal any long-term trends that we should be watching for? Right. So as I mentioned before, it's not a, a level of a crisis, right? 8.5 percent. It is not necessarily a large number by itself. Uh, it's only two percentage points above that government wide uh, rate. Uh, but it is something to, to be uh, keeping in mind. And uh, we could see if, 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 if it's not addressed, we could see potentially down the road this um, this uh, so-called great resignation affect the, the federal government workforce. But for now, for now, it doesn't seem so. All right. Well, we'll keep an eye on it. And I want to thank you so much for being on the program. Thank you for having me. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any future Government Matters interviews.